What's going on YouTube? This is Ultimate Advice Vids, and this is Tweak Recap. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys five of the best tweaks that are compatible with iOS 8.1, 8.0.2, 8.0.1, .1, and 8.0 available in Cydia. Let's begin. And the first tweak I'm going to be showing you guys is called CC Settings for iOS 8. I was just playing with it. And what it allows you to do is add tons of new options to Control Center. As you can see right here, I have so many more toggles right in Control Center here. And it was recently released for iOS 8. It was available on iOS 7 before. There's actually two packages in Cydia. There's CC settings for iOS 7 and CC settings for iOS 8. And as you can see, there's just so many things you could do with it. You know, just so many new toggles that it adds. And one of the most frequent complaints with Control Center is that it doesn't allow you to customize. And now you can do that. And it doesn't just allow you to have all these things. You could actually customize the order that they show up in. You could go into settings after you've installed the tweak and scroll down until you see CC settings. Go in there. And you could just drag them around like this as you can see to rearrange and that will take an effect on the actual control center. So let's say I wanted the screenshot uh, option to be all the way at the top. I could just drag that up there and now as you can see the screenshot option is the first thing that I see in control center. Let's just go ahead and take a screenshot right now as you can see. And so you could actually see it, that it does get rid of the control center so that's not in the screenshot so that's really nice. I'll actually take a picture of what's there. Let's go into the photos app here and go to camera roll as you can see. I took a screenshot of where I was in my device, not just the control center that was showing at that time. And if you want to, you could completely disable toggles from showing in the control center. You could just drag them into this section down here at the bottom. Do not include it. As you can see, that will completely get rid of them from control center. Again, you could completely rearrange it to your liking. And again, if you don't want all these pages, you could hide some of the ones that you don't want so you can minimize how many pages show up. It's just a really good tweak. It's something that a lot of people want, and I definitely love this tweak. Again, it's called CC Settings for iOS 8. It's available in Cydia for free. And the next tweak I'm going to be showing you guys is called Reach All. It's available in Cydia for free. And this tweak brings reachability from the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus to all other devices. So if you know what reachability is, it's basically it brings the entire display down a certain amount so you could reach areas at the top of the screen. And of course, on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, because the displays are larger, that really makes sense. However, some may argue that on a smaller device it may not make sense, but sometimes just when you're holding your device in a certain position, not necessarily having to do with the size of the display, sometimes it's still hard to reach the top of the screen. So this tweak will help that. So as you can see right here, let's say I wanted to reach this back button and I was holding my device like this. I could assign an activator gesture and as you can see reachability now works on older devices. And you can assign the activator gesture to anything. As you can see I have it for a triple press of the home button. And this is the actual real reachability. It's not just some copy of it that somebody threw together. It's the real code in iOS 8 that activates reachability that this tweak brings forward to reality. For example, as you can see, it's just so much smoother than previous tweaks. There has been a tweak for iOS 7 that tried to bring reachability to older devices, but this is the real deal because now we have this iOS 8 jailbreak and we can activate the legitimate code in iOS to bring forward reachability. And just let's say it's going to wallpaper. And for those of you who don't know, when you change your wallpaper, it affects the tint of reachability. So let's change it to something light just to show you that it works the exact same way as it normally does on the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. So I just set a lighter wallpaper, and as you can see, it's a lot lighter. Again, this is the full legitimate reachability on older devices. And I'll change it back to something darker, and it'll turn darker. And as you can see, there you go. Again, this is the legitimate reachability on older devices. And let's go into general accessibility and enable reduce motion. This option does speed up reachability. As you can see, it opens and closes a lot quicker. And also some other things in iOS, as you can see, like the animations. And the reason that I'm showing you these things, like the wallpaper change in this, is I'm just showing you that it's a legitimate reachability. I'll give you a direct comparison right here, as you can see, between the iPhone 6. So we just triple tap for the iPod Touch because it doesn't have a Touch ID sensor and of course the normal gesture is just a double tap on the home button and you can see that it works exactly the same. Let's go into an application and do it from here and we'll just double tap on the iPhone 6 and triple tap on the iPod Touch as you can see right there again it's the exact same thing on both devices. But once again if you have a device like the iPod Touch 5th gen that doesn't have a Touch ID sensor you're going to have to sign an activator gesture to something other than double tapping on the Touch ID sensor like the iPhone 6 does. So how we set this up after we install the tweak is you just go down in your settings application all the way until you see reach all and you go in there, make sure it's enabled and you will have to respring after you make any changes to these settings but you want to go into activation methods 
and you just find the activation method that you want to use. I'm going to use a triple press of the home button, and as you can see, that's what I've been using this entire time. However, you don't even have to use an activator gesture. You can use this tap box option. And what this option allows you to do is have a virtual button in the middle of the screen. So if we go ahead and enable this and then respring our device to apply the changes, it basically just going to put a button in the middle of our screen that's a you know, it's a virtual button and you could double tap on that as opposed to using an activator gesture if you want to do that. But I don't recommend it because it kind of interferes with things on the screen. So I just prefer using an activator gesture. So as you can see, after respringing, I have this button in the middle of my display right here. Let's say we go into an app. And again, it's still there. It's just there all the time. And you could double tap on it to get reachability, as you can see right here. Single tapping doesn't work. You have to double tap just like this. That's basically acting as the touch ID sensor on older devices. But again, I just prefer to have a activator gesture set as opposed to this virtual dot in the screen. And as far as the settings, if we just go back in here, there's nothing really else to do inside the settings app that I haven't showed you other than the activator methods and tap box. Of course, we could visit the developer's website and follow the developer on Twitter. It is a very good tweak. I just like the ability to add reachability to other devices. And again, that's all for this week. It's called Reach All. It's available in Cydia for free. And the next week I'm going to be showing you guys is called Sleek Code. It's available in Cydia for free. And this week will allow you to customize your passcode unlock screen. As you can see right here, it looks a lot different from normal iOS. I'll show you over here. As you can see, they're normally in iOS, we have these rims on the actual buttons. But as you see, there's no rims now. And we'll tap on them. You can see there's this circle that appears. So it's a lot cleaner if you ask me. Uh, how you could customize it, and there's some other things you could do with it in the settings app. So if we just go into settings on our device and scroll all the way down until we see sleek code and go in there, whoops, not reach all, sleek code. And if we go into passcode settings, and here are some things you could apply. You could apply blur, alpha, the button ring, which I just talked about earlier, that border. You could do button animations, and you could hide the emergency button, which only appears on iPhones, of course. I'll show you over here as you can see the emergency button. And I strongly suggest that you do not hide the emergency button. It's there for a reason. In an emergency, somebody might have to pick up your device and make an emergency call. So again, please do not hide that button. It's there for a reason. Now let's just enable something. So I'm going to turn on the blur and then the button ring. And then let's just go back. And we can go into miscellaneous settings. And we can hide the slides unlock text if you want to. Or hide the slides unlock little arrow there. That's what that means. The Chevron, it's basically just the arrow, the slides unlock arrow right there. You can hide that if you don't want it. As you can see, the changes have already taken effect there. We'll take a look at those in just a second. I'm just going to enable hide status bar, and let's hide the unlock little arrow there. Do that. So we'll scroll down. You could hide the top grabber, hide the bottom grabber, or hide the camera grabber. And the top and bottom grabbers are basically just control center and notification center, as you can see right here, these two grabbers. If you want to hide those so they're not visible, you could do that. And you could also hide the date and time or just hide the date. And let's go back. And the next option is just to respring to apply these changes. But I, as you just saw when I went to the lock screen, a lot of the changes did apply. As a matter of fact, all the changes did apply. So you don't need your respring. But it's still recommended just to ensure that everything is configured properly. And beneath that, we have credits. And this is the developer. You can follow the developer on Twitter if you want to. Now we're going to respring our device just to make sure that all the changes applied correctly. And as you can see, all the changes we made apply. There's no status bar. There's no slides unlock arrow. We have the rims. It just looks a lot better, a lot cleaner. Again, you can customize any of those options to your liking. And once again, this tweak is called Sleek Code. It's available in Cydia for free. And the next tweak I'm going to be showing you guys is called Convo Picks. It's available in Cydia for free. And this tweak adds the picture assigned to the contact that you're messaging with inside the Messages app. As you can see right here, it just appears on the main conversations page. And normally in iOS, this only appears on the iPhone 6 Plus, which really doesn't make sense because as you can see, there's clearly enough space to fit it, even on a smaller device like the iPod Touch 5th generation, and especially something like the iPhone 6. And again, with this tweak, you could achieve that. As you can see right here, we have the contact right here inside the Messages app, the contact picture. And in the conversation, it doesn't show, but it doesn't really need to. Just the ability to quickly be able to identify a conversation with a picture is really helpful. Again, you don't have to actually look at the name. You could just quickly glance and get a better idea of who you're talking to and quickly select it and be where you want to be quicker. And once again, the tweak's called Convo Picks. It's available in Cydia for free. There's no actually settings to configure. If we just go in here, as you can see, there's no settings to configure inside the settings app. And it also doesn't add anything to the home screen. So again, now, nothing to configure. Once you install it, it just works. 
And the next tweak I'm going to be showing you guys is called Pull to Respring. It's available in Cydia for free. And what this tweak allows you to do is quickly respring your device using the settings app. And basically what you do is you open up the settings app and you just pull to refresh in the settings app. And as you can see right here, we have a refresh wheel. And if we just pull it fully, as you can see, our device resprings. And you can enable or disable the tweak inside the settings app if you scroll all the way down until you do see pull to respring. Again, you could disable or enable it here. And when you're disabling it, it does not need a respring, as you can see, to take effect. You can see right there, it automatically takes effect and disables the tweak. However, when you're enabling it, that's a different story. As you can see right here, it's still disabled. You either just have to kill the application just like this and then relaunch it, which works perfectly fine. Or you could respring and reboot your device using a different tweak. And that makes five tweaks. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.